came to ABC to grow and to learn more about the word and really dig deep into our theology as a conference and learn more about our basic Bible doctrines, basically. I came to ABC because I was at a point in my life where I felt like I was at a standstill and uh, looking into the future, I thought that I would be done for, you know, and uh, I wanted to change. I wanted to have a future that was bright, not a future that would put me down the track of ruin. And that's what first really inspired me to take ABC seriously. To know more about the faith and to get closer with God and knowing more about his word and what it looks like in ministry and our daily lives and our actions. I realized that I would not be satisfied doing anything other than what God has called me to do. At ABC, I've become stronger. <laughs> for those that are considering ABC, I would say that they should absolutely go for it. There's only gain to get from being at the college. Um, I'd tell someone that's considering coming to ABC to really go for it and not to doubt anything because they will have a blast. I think that no matter what God is calling you to, there is immense value to be learned here at the ABC. Um, and the reason is, is it's not just for pastors, it's for future youth leaders, it's for future elders, it's for future ministry leadership. And your time spent here, regardless of its duration, um, cannot be undermined. My favorite moments? That's a tough one. I have a lot of favorites. We worshipped and praised God on top of this beautiful mountain. It was like we were in our own little world at this top of the mountain, being able to see out over all this area. It was so cool. Another thing that I really enjoyed was, you know, go surf trip down in Louisiana, um, just being able to see what ministry would really look like. Some of the most valuable moments that I've had at ABC have really been with the fellowship. Um, regardless if we're sitting around a table eating a meal or playing a board game or, or having a serious, slightly heated theological discussion, um, you will never be in another place in your whole life where you were surrounded by like-minded believers like this. It's like you're creating a family out of these, the students and the time that you have here. If you're on the fence, in my opinion, just do it. I am ABC. <laughs> I am ABC. I am ABC. I am ABC. Hello, Fuelies! It is so good to, uh, well, not, I don't get to see you, but at least uh, um, we're together uh, spiritually. We are all one in the body of Christ. And so even though we're not physically together, we are still spiritually uh, renewed and, and close in heart, mind, and purpose. We are in a complete agreement that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. And so I have been tasked with the conversation about talking to you about um, the Great Commission. The Great Commission is a wonderful, wonderful topic, and it's something that is a command uh, that Jesus Christ calls us to do. And so uh, we're going to talk about that right now, and I'm going to share a few things with you about that. And I hope uh, this convicts you to try to do some things, because uh, one of the things that we notice, um, especially now that we are um, quarantined and we're socially apart, is how much access we still have to each other. I mean, think about it. I'm here in Pelzer, South Carolina, uh, filming myself, and this video could go all around the world. That is pretty amazing stuff. And uh, you have that same capability, and I know for a, a lot of you, you have even more capabilities because you all are a lot more tech savvy than I am. I'm sure you all have um, the Facebook, and uh, the Twizzler or the Twitter, as you kids call it, um, that Instagram that you uh, post things on or that snappy chat that you guys do, and you have all those uh, great opportunities. And you're all so fast with your little texts um, and being able to send everything out. It's just amazing um, 
what we can send out and what we can do. And uh, I want to challenge you that uh, with that power comes great responsibility. You guys have an opportunity to uh, share things that uh, many of uh, Christ's disciples never had the opportunity to do. I mean, imagine if Paul had Twitter or uh, Facebook or something like that. I mean, the things that he could accomplish, uh, that would be uh, pretty impressive. Um, you know, I, I would hate to see Paul on Facebook, though. Uh, he might get sucked into some of that Jerry Springer stuff that happens on uh, Facebook, and I'd hate for that to happen. But nevertheless, uh, let's talk about uh, the Great Commission. Um, all throughout uh, the Bible, it's uh, the Great Commission is mentioned five times. Um, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, uh, John, all mention the Great Commission. Uh, the book of Acts mentioned the Great Commission. Here's how some of the ways that they are said that I want to share with you. In John, it says, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. That's John 20, 21. Uh, Luke 24, 47 says this. With my authority, take this message of repentance to all the nations. Beginning in Jerusalem, there is forgiveness of sins for all who turn to me. Uh, Mark 16, 15 says, uh, you are to go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone everywhere. I go, wow, um, that is great. You know, Jesus Christ, when... Uh, he was here with us, took those opportunities, uh, changed the world, um, left and is seated at the right hand of God. And when I say left, I mean he physically left, um, and but still is with us in all believers spiritually. And we have Jesus Christ with us spiritually. Uh, he was limited while he was here physically in one place, so he could only affect one area, one region, um, did an amazing job because here we are in all these different places being able to uh, give him honor and uh, give the Father glory through his son, Jesus Christ. And that's pretty, pretty impressive. Um, but when Jesus went into all the world, he said, my disciples are gonna do even greater things. And now here we are, the body of Christ, and we all have been given a purpose. And I want to just share with you a little bit about what uh, Christ has done for you, what God has also done for you. If you uh, have your Bibles, I encourage you to, to grab them and, or maybe write some of these verses down and look at them later. But I'll, uh, from the very beginning, God has been talking about um, going into the world and saving all of us. That's his goal. That's what he wants. He's not going to save everybody because he's given us free will. And some people are very obstinate and will not, uh, will not choose to be saved. But those who are saved, we are blessed because we were created for a purpose. Even in the Old Testament, it says in Proverbs 16, 14, the Lord has made everything for his purpose. I believe that you have been made for a purpose, if that is uh, the case that everything includes us, which I think it does. God has a purpose for bringing uh, you here, uh, listening to this video, because he wants you to understand better purpose for your life. You know, God planned a mission for your life even before you were born. In the book of Ephesians, this is what it says, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, God is our maker, and in union with Christ, he has created us for a life of good works, which he has already prepared for us to do. Now think about that. He has already prepared you to do these good works. God planned your, your life. He has planned your mission even before you were born. Your life mission has both uh, universal elements and unique elements. Universal in that there are some things that every believer are called and required to do, and they are um, um, universal for everybody. They're universal truths um, that Christ has called each and every one of us to do. But there are unique elements of that as well, in that you were made uh, unique 
uh, with a different life set of skills, a different way of looking at things, a different group of people that other people don't have access to or responsibility for. And so you have uh, not only a universal connection, but a unique connection to a plan and a purpose. Um, when you became a believer, you were given a new mission, and that mission is unique. Um, and there is parts of it that we all have in common, and let me just share some of that. Uh, fulfilling um, my life's mission brings glory to God. So your life mission uh, might be universal for everybody, and it's also got aspects of it that are unique, um, but it is something that we all have in common that God is doing this very thing in all believers. As a matter of fact, John 17, 4 says, I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Um, that was uh, what Jesus said about the work that he had done. I hope that you are able to say those same words. Um, when we talk about Jesus leading us, and I just want to uh, share with you uh, how I feel sometimes. You know, uh, when Jesus uh, became my Lord and Savior, um, there were times where I just didn't want to follow. You know, like I, I go, I want you to be my Lord and Savior, Jesus. Uh, just, just not like all the time. Like sometimes it's not... Um, a good time to be led by you, like lead me, just uh, lead me when I want to be led, you know, and, and if you're going to send me, uh, send me where I want to go, and if you're going to ask me to talk to somebody, you know, um, just kind of open it up and make it really easy for me, you know, maybe have them come and talk to me about, about, uh, about you. That would be a lot easier than me having to go out and tell people about it. And certainly if you're going to send me somewhere, you know, send me someplace that I want to see that I really would like to go, you know, maybe give me some money to be able to do that. I'd really like to go to Hawaii you know, and maybe have some people come up and just tell me that they noticed that I seem like a follower of Christ. And now they want to follow too. I mean, wouldn't that be great? So like, lead me, but lead me when I want to be led. Lead me when I feel like it. Lead me when, and, that, and that's not the way it works. This is not how this whole thing works. We need to be a people that are ready. We have a responsibility and you have been given a mission. There is... Um, a verse in 1 Corinthians 9, 16 that says, telling the good news is my duty, something I must do. How terrible it will be for me if I do not tell the good news. There's a verse that says, you must warn them that they may live if you don't speak out to warn the wicked to stop their evil ways, they will die in their sins, but I will hold you responsible for their death. Those, for me, are very sobering words. Those are very hard words to hear. Now, uh, as I said earlier, we have a lot of amazing things, so I want to offer you a challenge, and this is what I would like you to do. You have uh, the Twitter, you have the social medias, you have all of those things, you have texts, you even have a phone on your phone. So I know that's just another app that you kids don't like to use these days, but you do have the capability to call people on that little box that you carry around. Here's what I challenge you to do. Find somebody in your contacts and your social media platforms uh, who you know doesn't know the Lord. And maybe text them about it. Maybe call them about it. Uh, maybe write them an email and share uh, your salvation story. Maybe share a growth story about what Jesus has done for you. Uh, talk to them about it. Text them and say, hey, do you got some time where we can get together and I can tell you about Jesus? I want to challenge you when this is over to take 
some time to do that. There is no better time than right now to be doing. I know we're stuck at home. I know we're social distancing. I know um, we have um, obstacles in our life. But we certainly have more time, more opportunities to share. And the only thing that's stopping us many times is fear. Don't live in fear. Be a follower of Christ. For many of you, you go, yeah, but, but I don't feel like Jesus is really working in my life right now. I think that a lot of times we feel that way because we haven't shared Jesus to somebody else. Because when you share your faith with somebody else, it grows your faith. And I want you to take that information, think about that. That if you could just talk about your Lord and Savior with somebody, what that will not only do for their lives, but what it can do for yours. So I hope you are blessed. I hope you are staying safe. I hope you are doing well. I'm going to get my mask on and I am getting ready to head on out of here. So God bless. I love you. Take care. See you soon. Hello, Vision 2020 campers. I know one night a week y'all get to eat some good Louisiana cooking. Sorry y'all missed out on that this year. But uh, we got some folks coming into town, and we have got them some stuff cooking up right now. They're going to get a little taste of Louisiana when they get here. So uh, miss all y'all. Sorry we didn't get our, to spend our time together this year. I know y'all are looking forward to some good cooking. We'll catch y'all next year. Y'all stay tuned to what's going on in uh, the Turning Point Youth Ministries. And have a good evening. God bless. Thank you for joining us on this year's online edition of Fuel. Uh, we're really glad that you all took some time to, to tune into the online content. And thank you to everybody who helped create the videos and made this possible. One of the things that we said at the beginning was that we were really bummed about not being able to uh, spend time with you face to face and worship with you and get into God's word with you. Um, together, but we really do hope that the uh, stuff that we posted for you is an encouragement for the full year. And just always remember that you can go back to the Turning Point Youth Ministries YouTube channel and we watch some of those videos. And we want to remind you about those upcoming events. Refuel South is pending site confirmation for dates, so we'll get those to you soon. We have Refuel North is January 15th through 17th, and Refuge is March 12th through 14th. And for those of you who participated in our social media uh, posts, we will be announcing the winners of the scholarship raffle soon. And Fuel 21 is already underway. We're working on that, getting things rolling, and we want to announce next year's theme. So here you are. Thanks, everyone. Take care of yourselves and your family. We look forward to seeing you soon.